Okay, so what I wanted to start to cover was, since we are talking about the aggregate demand to aggregate supply model, is to first cover the AV. Okay, so in terms of the AV, again, it stands for the aggregate demand. And what is the aggregate demand curve? It's basically the curve showing the quantity of goods and services, households, firms, the government, and people abroad are willing to buy at a given price level. Okay, how much they want to purchase. Okay, so in terms of an equation for this curve, we have the following. Okay, so the aggregate demand is equal to the consumption plus I investment plus G for government spending plus the exports minus the imports. Okay, and so what does the curve look like? It looks like this. Okay, so we have first P representing the price level and Y representing output. Okay, and so what is the shape of the curve? It basically looks like this. Okay, so we have our AD. And so this is supposed to represent, then, a negative relationship between the output and prices, okay? or should I say, between aggregate demand and the price level. Okay, and so what explains this relationship? Okay, so the idea is the shape can be explained by the wealth effect. Okay, so what happens? Essentially what happens is when the price level increases, what can we say happens to the purchasing power of wealth and income? A, the purchasing power of wealth and income is going to go down. Okay, and so then what does that mean or what does that affect in terms of aggregate demand? This affects consumption. Okay, if you have this lower purchasing power, consumption is then going to decrease. Okay, and so then what does that mean for aggregate demand? Well, since that's a, a component of aggregate demand, aggregate demand is going to fall. So what we see is this negative relationship between the price level and the aggregate demand, this goes up, this goes down, and hence we have this downward sloping line. 